1979 Sony Trinitron KV9300. Uh, it's a little portable set with a handle. It's pretty small. Anyway, this is the problem with it. Image brightness fluctuation acts like G2 is changing, raster size continuous. Let's see. Guess it would be good if I turned the power on to it, wouldn't it? ...remain following this massive explosion that took place here last night. All right, Eliana, thank you. Our Alex Rozier live in the South Bay right now with more on the impact from this fire. Alex. Yeah, Colleen, we're expecting to see gas prices increase in the short term, but today in El Segundo, we've been seeing crews put some water on some of the hot spots at the refinery, but the large fire is now out, and incredibly, no one was hurt. It was a fire well, that's interesting. Miles. Around 9.30 last night, dozens of crews in the South Bay fought the flames at the Chevron El Segundo refinery. At this time, it is completely out. Casey Snow was a division chief with the El Segundo Fire Department. We did have flames throughout the night. Uh, we were able to isolated to one area chevron said the fire started in the southeast corner of this large refinery chris pimentel is the mayor of el segundo el segundo is five and a half square miles we have about seventeen thousand residents but in the midst of that this takes up more than 25 percent of our land area i mean this city was founded by standard oil and not only does the refinery take up a lot of land, it also produces a lot of gasoline in Southern California. Depending on the time of year, about a sixth of all the gasoline in Southern California is refined through this, through this plant. So some may wonder, can drivers in Southern California now expect to pay more at the pump? Matt McLean is a petroleum analyst for Gas Buddy. How much of an increase in the price of gas can people expect? Anywhere from 15 to 30 cents a gallon, 25 cents a gallon, somewhere in that neighborhood. And we're going to leave a little asterisk beside that because it's still an unfolding situation on the extent of the damage. McLean said the damage from the fire will determine the impact on gas prices wow, the long term. It was not a small fire. I think that's a very safe thing to say. So the key of the matter is what was damaged how extensive is the damage and how long will it take to repair right now investigators are trying to pinpoint the cause of the fire but as they work the mayor's just grateful no one was hurt I mean, to have a fire of this scale with zero injuries is a testament to the preparation the professionalism of the firefighters and policemen and the firefighters aboard chevron and we did try to speak with Chevron on camera today, but they did not make anyone available for an interview. However, they did say in a statement... Yeah, the brightness does go up and down. ...state and federal agencies as the investigation... Thank you. Well, we're also following breaking news in downtown LA. Well, it seems to be calming down as it warms up. Problems like this are really difficult to, to fix a lot of the time. And, you know, I... I is it the CRT? It very well could be. Back. Go with Avelity. Avelity worked fast. Some saw relief in as early as one week. And Avelity lasted. On average, significant relief was seen at six weeks. Avelity. may increase suicidal thoughts and actions in young adults. Tell your doctor about sudden changes to mood, thoughts, or behavior. Don't take Ovality if you have a history of seizure, eating disorder, or have abruptly stopped drinking alcohol, or taking benzodiazepines, barbiturates, or anti-seizure medicine. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Don't take if you're allergic to dextromethorphan, bupropion, or any of the ingredients in Ovality. Don't take with MAOIs. High blood pressure, manic episodes, serious eye problems, and dizziness can occur. Report all medicines you take to avoid a life-threatening condition. Don't take Ovality if you are or may become pregnant. Side effects can include dizziness, headache, diarrhea, feeling sleepy, dry mouth, sexual function problems and excessive sweating ask your provider about Avelity. Go with Avelity. i was born with a sunny disease. i want my sexual function problems now i want my benzodiazepine knows with type 2 diabetes oh yeah 27. as a chef it could have set me back i didn't let it i'm chef franklin becker and this is what my ozempic era looks like i lowered my a1c and i saw noticeable weight loss I also learned some people take Ozempic to lower the risk of major cardiovascular events like stroke, heart attack, or death. And others take it to lower the risk of worsening chronic kidney disease. Don't share needles or pens or reuse needles. Don't take if you or your family had MTC, MEN2, or if allergic to it. Stop taking and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck or any of these allergic reactions. 
tell your provider if you plan to have surgery or a procedure, are nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Serious side effects may include inflamed pancreas, gallbladder or severe stomach problems, or changes in vision. Call your prescriber if you have any of these symptoms. Taking with a sulfonylurea or insulin may raise low blood sugar risk. Common side effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, constipation. Some side effects lead to dehydration, which may worsen kidney problems. Discover the GLP-1 with the most FDA-approved uses. Ozempic. When Donald Trump's agent... So you gotta love how they're showing you food in a restaurant and talking about diarrhea, bloating, gas. My oh my, there's a lot packed in a small area here. Almost need the schematic on this to see how it works. I think... I think all the inf the grids are all t the cathodes are tied together and the grids are where the f information's fed in. Actually, it looks like the opposite of that like I was wrong. It looks like how's that solder joint right there? Solder joints all look okay. It looks like all the cathodes are separate and the grids are tied together. Well, I'm just tying on to different grids here and I'm trying to watch the voltage and see if it moves the slightest. And I think this meter is kind of slow, but if you zoom in, you can see it moving there. This is measuring G2, and it's very unstable. This is labeled as G4. It's very stable. This is labeled as G1. It's pretty stable. G2 is what's all over the place. I unplugged the CRT board and powered the setup and I'm still measuring G2. And it is still unstable even with the CRT out of the picture. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I'm going to leave that, just turn it off, and we'll check that when it's cold. See how much it's fluctuating when it's cold. Yeah, it's moving around. Well, here it is. I actually had a copy of it. Look at this. Never been opened. Factory Fresh, stapled from 1979. Sony Color, KV9300 very gently open this up okay g2 which is this one pin 5 357 volts comes through a 3.3k a 1.2 meg to a screen control the screen control goes to 747 volt boost so Um, this could definitely be a problem. Uh, that could be a problem. That 747 volt boost source comes right here off the collector of the horizontal output transistor. So I would imagine if this was fluctuating here you would see a size you know the size of the picture varying and bumping around no electrolytics unfortunately in this circuit and this tv looks like it's been recapped already the majority of all these electrolytic small electrolytic samatsushita ones are all gone so we could definitely have a problem there there 
or anything here. My bet is on either probably the screen pod or possibly that 1.2 meg. Or possibly here, I see what they do is they're using, this is the filter capacitor. And they're using this line right here to the 171 volt supply as the ground. So they have 171 volts here. Right now I'm measuring at this point right here. And it's all over the place. Okay, now I'm measuring right here. And it's a lot more stable. Now I'm measuring the boost directly. And it's a lot more stable. So it's like it's it's after it's like it's that pot I pulled that pot out and now it seems a little bit more stable still not a hundred percent is it I'm gonna have to substitute that with a couple fixed resistors in fact do I just have two one meg resistors because uh, I think it's set about in the middle. Okay, two 1 meg resistors, and I'm clipped back onto G2. Let's see what happens. That looks pretty stable, doesn't it? a little bit high I went back and looked at the original video clip and it was at 362 volts uh, now it's at 422 so I'm hooked back up I got everything hooked back up I got an image here it seems to be stable and the voltage seems to be real stable, too. So, yeah, it, the problem is that thing. And I don't know where I'm going to get a 2 meg high voltage pot. Because that... Even those that voltage across those resistors is too high. I bet those resistors are like 250 volts, and I've I've got 400 across them. So, yeah, let me find out. Let me figure this out. You might think, why doesn't he just try cleaning this pot? Well, the wiper is not the issue. So even with the wiper disconnected, I'm still getting the fluctuation and voltage over here. So the problem is with the carbon track that goes around this itself. It's probably got a crack in it or something like that. So the owner of the set is going to look for a replacement for this in another Sony, like a junk chassis, a parts chassis. So what I'm going to do for the video is I'm going to use six of these, which will give me a little over two megs, and I'll center tap that. Uh, resistors have a voltage rating, and the max voltage on these is 200 volts. So if I use six of them, I divide my voltage across them and don't overvolt resistors. Yes, resistors do have a breakdown voltage. That's why when you're working on those old 7-inch sets, they always have a bunch of high meg resistors in series to get the voltage rating. And yes, there are high voltage rated of these resistors, but I don't have them. So we're just going to go with these. These are 200 volts. And this is what I mean. So a quarter watt 
maximum working voltage 200, maximum overload voltage 400. So you really, you really just wouldn't want to use two one meg resistors to do this because you're up above the working voltage close to the overload voltage. And actually check this out, this pot is bad. Remember, it's supposed to be two megs, and look at what it's doing just sitting there. So measuring one side of it, because it's about in the middle, we're getting 967K. Measuring the other side, getting 38, 37 megs, wherever it wants to be, and it's floating all over the place. So like I said, the carbon track in that thing is broken. That That is definitely the problem, was the problem. This here should be a legit substitute for that pot. So long as you never have to adjust it, uh, should be good. Which screen, you don't have to adjust screen that much. A little bit as the tube ages. There it is installed. Now we should be able to watch some pharmaceutical ads without flickering or brightness changes in the picture. Here we go from cold. <laughs> oh, yes, I love you too. Gibbs was a dog for us and we uh, renamed him Rusty. He's actually uh, quite a bit of a teddy bear. Good boy. Good boy, aren't you? So when he's in a really cuddly mood, he'll snuggle right up to you. In fact, Zoe's one of the first people he goes to in the It's world. a little bit too bright. From a year's old tweet, the debate that's stirring some bad blood coming up. You know, I almost didn't make it because I was back there watching the trailer. <laughs> uh, it was called Dear Luke, Love Me. It was actually very emotional. I was getting choked up oh watching. Oh my gosh, this. you are kind of teary right now. And now this dramatic entrance. Yeah, yeah, and then I had to, hey, get in the studio. So there I am. <laughs> so our next guest, Guillermo Diaz. Remember him from Scandal? Yes. Guillermo Diaz. I remember Guillermo Diaz. Hell yes. Yeah, it's stable now. That's me adjusting it. Okay, here's the voltage. Very stable now. After barricading himself inside the car for two hours, the man in his 70s 